welcome to Before Brunch TV, a show where women are pouring into each other and then their glasses. I'm your host, Stephanie Walters. And today we're talking about self-care, how self-care affects us, what we do, what we don't do, and what we need to do more of. And today I have some special friends here with me. We have Sherry, Ashley, and Tasha. Welcome to the show. Hi. Are you, are you guys so excited right. to be here? Y'all nervous? Just right. <laughs> <It's> a little. <laughs> so we're talking about self-care. And that's one of the things I feel like us as women, we don't do enough of, and all of us are professional working women. So kind of like, I'll just start off, give me your definition of what self-care means to you. Me doing like those extras for yourself that you just continue to pass up on because you have, you have to get this done today and then Tuesday and Wednesday. And then it's like, you, you kind of get into a rhythm and you forget about those little things that make you feel complete, feel full. And that's kind, of, that's kind of what I think of. So those things that you put off, continually put off, you shouldn't put off, but you do because we consider those as not as important because it's only just about us, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I agree. It's, for me, self-care is, is, you know, my health and eating right and getting to the gym and all of the things. And as an executive and a single mom, I tend to sacrifice mm -hmm. myself because I give it to other people. I give it to my job. I give it to my different careers. I give it to my son and everybody else tends to come first. And then I sacrifice my own mm -hmm. self-care. Yeah, I think um, self-care definitely for me starts with mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and to you know the points just previously made, it really takes a lot for you to kind of set aside that time for yourself. What is, it, I always like to say to myself, what does Ashley like to do? And it doesn't involve anybody else, just something that I personally enjoy. And that's your moment to re-energize, to take time for yourself to mentally decompress, reconnect, or meditate, whatever it is that helps you get back on balance. And then there comes the physical aspect yeah. of it. I think you hit on something, the, the mental health part. I mean, a lot of times we don't think of that. We're like, oh, I need to go to the spa. I'm gonna get a little body scrub, a facial. But a lot of times I find myself, when I go do those things, my brain is still, like running a mile a minute. And I'm just like, why can't I mentally relax? So like, what are some things you do to actually like mentally relax? Actually, the gym helps me relax a lot. Um, I love to write, um, so that's what I do. I'm an author, so that's my time to put on my headphones and just be in my corner by myself. Or I like to go to the movies a lot by myself. So little things that I just love doing that doesn't really involve anybody else that I can decompress. Or sometimes I just like to read my Bible and I pray. Mm -hmm. Um, having conversations with God for me is always the most peaceful part of my day and that's really where you can reconnect and you can do that anywhere so yeah. that's the best part about that yeah um, Sherry and Tasha both of y'all <laughs> mentioned like just doing things that you, you put off you you give so much of yourself to other people and I know you Tasha as a, a personal trainer you're always like in in constant contact with people like what is the most challenging part about finding time for that self-care for you it is like you you have to like physically <laughs> physically and mentally create it because i'm in a giving type of profession mm -hmm. um from 5 a.m to 8 p.m mm -hmm. so i am constantly talking to people redirecting inspiring motivating and giving out tips to help people with their life so i give a lot um monday through saturday um and then sunday is a uh, planning day for the, for the everything else. So I find myself trying to find uh, like little t tips, uh, tidbits like 10 minutes here, um, eight minutes here to check in with myself. Like, how are you doing? Do you, what do you need? Do you need some more water? Um, do you need, when you go home tonight, do you need to, instead of uh, scrolling or writing down things, do you need to turn on different type of music to help you to transition? So I'm always in a, you know, thinking, you know, just like you mentioned, like being entrepreneurs. So I find myself doing like little self checks throughout the day. It is a juggle. And, and I'd say over the last couple of years, I have failed at, at finding those moments for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I don't sleep well. I also don't find the gym sin like at all. <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I think I push myself until I get to that that combustible point where I actually have to take a break and I have to sit down or go outside. I like to be by myself uh, during those moments. I like to go sit where it's quiet and have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and 
and but I still don't think my mind shuts down. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I have really found that that place where I can truly just stop. Mm -hmm. I find it really difficult to, mm -hmm. to put myself before anything else. Yeah, I, I agree. I, my mind is always going to, I'm just like, when one thing stops, okay, I gotta get to the next thing. Next thing stops, I gotta get to the next mm -hmm. thing. And it's just, I feel like if I stop, I'm gonna miss something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like as women, we're just always like on. To the next mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And it, you don't get a chance to just like turn off. And I think with, with all the careers that you all have, what would you say was like, or if it has been like a breaking point for you where you're like, hey, hey, me, self, I'm, I'm here. Like what, what was that breaking point for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, ooh, let me figure out which one. <laughs> I was gonna, lately for me, it, it's my son because my mm -hmm. son has, you know, he's 14 and he has started complaining. I, I never get to see you. I see mm -hmm. you, you know, for like an hour at night mm -hmm. and to have your child tell you that, you know, you're not spending enough mm -hmm. time with them is very painful. Yeah. Um, but, and, and so I'm trying to get better at that. But as women, especially in our world, I like, I always tell people it's still a man's world. And, mm -hmm. and I do feel like as an executive in the financial world that I do have to work harder mm -hmm. than my male counterparts. So yes. I have to take that extra time because I'm not looked at equally when I stand up in a boardroom and I speak. So I always have to make sure that I'm on top of everything mm -hmm. that I say or I do. So I, it takes me longer than it would a, a man. Mm -hmm. And that's just So you're just working facts. harder to maybe prove yeah. yourself too. Right. So mm -hmm. that's more effort you have to put right. out mm -hmm. into someone else other right. than with you or your side. Right. I think for me this year, my breaking point was when I kept getting sick. So when I don't take those moments for myself, uh, my body will say, I'm gonna take it from you. Yeah. Um, and that's really what started to happen. I found myself having to kind of stop writing. I wasn't able to do certain events or go do things I was supposed to do, book signings and things like that. I fell behind on my PhD homework a few times. And there was one point where I was sick in bed and I had a discussion post to turn in. I was on my side in bed, like typing it. So even then you couldn't even rest. So um, I feel what you guys are saying because you don't get to stop. And I feel like at some point your body's gonna say, I'm gonna snatch it from you mm -hmm. if you don't learn to give it to me. So um, my mom was just like, if you don't learn to slow down, she's like, you're gonna be out longer than just yeah. a week or out yeah. longer than just two or three days. And that's why I have to break down my schedule by the hour. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm gonna give this two hours. I'm gonna write in my book for three hours. I'm gonna go sit and watch TV. I'm gonna cook dinner. Like if it has to go down to the minute. And if I get off track, it's like everything's out of whack. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things where creatively, when you're a writer, my brain doesn't stop you when I'm at the gym. I'm like, ooh, that could totally work for my character. <laughs> I need to write this down real quick. Um, or, you know, my PhD, well, like, it's predominantly males in my program. So at the end of the day, we have to constantly keep finding different ways to be creative in a world that's kind of dominated so your brain doesn't stop working. So I understand exactly what you're saying, but it's definitely was my health for me this year. One of the self-care things for me that I've done over the last like probably year and a half is, is saying that I'm not okay. Yeah. Because so many times, you know, we have to show up like in meetings or especially in, in a male dominated world and be like, if somebody asks how you know, I'm good, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And the DJ is how you're like, help me. My, right. my standard every day, if you ask anyone who works around me or with me, people, hey, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you? And everyone laughs because it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what's going on mm -hmm. underneath right. because yeah. that I smile. I'm amazing. How are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's my thing. And mm -hmm. that's what I think as powerful women, we feel like we have to be that way. I know I've posted a million times on Facebook. You know, you don't see the the women who, who lay in bed and cry, cry. in the yes. dark yes. by yes. themselves. Yes. And that's because <laughs> you're looked upon as you're really weak if you if i'm in a boardroom and and i get weak or or, or back down or something it, it says something yeah. and so you have to be really strong and powerful and then you know you go home and you you're, i sit in my car and I'm, yeah. you know and you have that cry and then i tell myself all right you're done snap out of it let's yeah. go yeah. Get back, get back but, to I, but like, are we doing ourselves a disservice by continuing to be like i'm fine i'm yep. good i'm fine because it's like you keep telling yourself that but then i feel like the way other people are gonna 
receive it is that oh nothing ever goes on right. with her she's good yeah. so now yeah. we're, we're like projecting this perfect image that we're okay right. and you're really like crying out for help yeah. yeah yeah i think it is i think it is a big problem in society today i think the mental health with not just people at my level but at every level is a huge issue we overwork our staff we underpay them and, and they're treated, my, not my staff, <laughs> my staff loves me. <laughs> but they tend to treat them like they're a commodity or they're disposable mm -hmm. or they're a number. It's really disappointing. And you you touched on something as well in terms of like the, being overworked, underpaid. And I look at social media yeah. and how, like how that affects even our self-care. Like, do you feel like it affects you guys? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. because everyone is so, Everyone has it together. Everyone is, every, everybody's like, and I joke, I say, listen, everybody's like one happy picture away from divorce. Stop <laughs> believing. <laughs> it's, not, it's not true. But we do feed into that. You see people who are posting all these amazing things and, and you think, gosh, you know, they have it all together. What's wrong with me? Why don't I have it all together? And, and it's, you know, I, often have to stop and tell myself that's not reality that's yeah. what people want you to see that's yeah. not that's not their life they're probably just like me struggling and you know uh, only sleeping three hours a day trying to you know get their businesses going or you know where they want to be in life yeah. yeah definitely social media can be I would say sometimes a little bit discouraging. Mm -hmm. um, I love posting this quote that said, just because I can carry it doesn't mean it's not heavy. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite quotes, only because um, as strong women, we can carry things mm -hmm. and make it look like mm -hmm. it's easy, but God knows it's <laughs> heavy. Um, I get asked all the time how I juggle the 18 million things that I'm doing mm -hmm. and still keep up and have to travel and do everything else. And you watch everyone do it flawlessly on Instagram or Facebook and you're just like looking at your counterparts from college and you're like, am I not doing mm -hmm. enough? And you could have accomplished a lot and you'll still put a big question mark next to it. Yeah. And I remember I was watching something on social media where, you know, we have to learn to pat ourselves on the back every now and then mm -hmm. and not be afraid to say good job to ourselves yeah. or take like mm -hmm. people do social media cleanses and mm -hmm. things like that. But I think if you do a social media cleanse, you should have a goal before you come back. Um, I changed who I followed. Mm -hmm. That was one thing I did. That's a really um, good form of self-care. Yeah, yeah I, I changed who I followed. I started following things that help empower me and mm -hmm. empower my brand as an right. author and what I'm trying to accomplish. I follow other students. So I don't just follow, you know, all the big celebrities and people who yeah. have all this money or people who just look like they're stunting for the gram. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, like I talked about that in my book. I use like social media for inspiration, not duplication. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I don't think that anybody's, uh, anybody's life is perfect, regardless of somebody who I know to being a celebrity. So I've never looked at celebrities as like gods. I looked at that as a person who has a specific skill or talent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they still might not have common sense. So what you consume and like what you listen to, it yes. all like it all like really affects your life. So I started just doing some little small things like, oh, I'll do a face mask at home, or just now that I'm like a new mom, just taking a shower sometimes. Just yeah. like, oh, I shaved my legs today. Like sometimes <laughs> I, I tell women, just even doing a little bit of something, like whether it's like you shaving your legs, you painting your toes, like you don't even have to go out and spend a bunch of money. Just doing something small like will make you feel so much better because I think we get into this whole like I gotta have this whole extravagant spa day and spend five hundred dollars because spas are not cheap nowadays. No, they are not. I'm trying to got expensive. <laughs> like why is a massage one hundred eighty five dollars? But it's a whole other thing. Um, but just doing something small to really like just boost your self confidence, I think, really really helps. That hot shower thing is, is serious. Everything, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And they that's always joke about women. They always joke <laughs> women like will use like it's like scalding hot water. Like, Yo, yeah. that's me. That's me. That's, yeah. that's me. That's me. My husband's like, why is the water so hot? I'm like, this is not. Hot. This feels yes, good. Right? It's good. You take an extra shower. Exactly. <laughs> with your um, with your careers, and we talked about how just like showing up, like, oh, I'm fine with your careers, like. What's something that you would say um, maybe to like your younger self? I would say like not worrying so much, like just worrying about stuff like that's totally out of your control. Um, like things to me in the end, they always work out. And why are you worrying about something like 
obsessively or habitually that is nothing like death defying. I would say that and then just to do therapy consistently. Yeah. I would tell myself like mm -hmm. not doing therapy when it's an acute crisis type mm -hmm. of situation. It was maintenance. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like some check-ins with somebody who is like impartial mm -hmm. to um, you and you know or not biased because mm -hmm. they know you, you know. No. Right. Um, yeah. I would say I would say those two things. I think I would tell my younger self, um, one, to stop comparing myself mm -hmm. and to, um, that, that I, you are enough. I think even, even at 49, I think some days I work so hard because I still have that, mm. you're just not enough. You're mm. not, you know, and, and that comes from um, you know, whether that's a low self-esteem or a low self-worth from when I was younger. Yeah. And, and I was always felt like I just, I just wasn't good enough. And as successful as I am, you know, my sisters look at me and they're like, you're crazy. Why, yeah. why do you still feel that way? This has been a theme in conversation where you said you're comparing. It's like somebody's probably striving to get to where you're at or in any of us where we're at, but we're like, striving to see you know if somebody else is you know on a level that we want to be at but you're like your goals you're somebody's ceiling you know right right i would probably say for me i think from me it was about perfection i felt like i always have to be perfect because that's the expectation that people have had either when they met me work with me or been around me long enough um, so to my um, younger self, I would probably say it's okay to fail. And I think that surrounding myself with different people who necessarily um, feed into you and are trying to help you grow, not necessarily just tear you down, discourage yeah. you, that has helped a lot um, as far as it goes in counseling and things like that. She's right. It goes a long way because mental health, people don't know what you do when you go home and close your door. I live by myself. Yeah. So you have no idea what at home Ashley's like. Yeah. And sometimes those days are hard. Mm -hmm. Those nights are hard when you're alone in your brain. Mm -hmm. And then you're recapping everything that you think you could have did better, even though probably five people patted you on the back and told you it was perfect, but you're finding everything wrong yeah. with it because to you, it's not an A+. Plus. Yeah. I love quotes. I think they're inspiring. She says, just because you stumbled doesn't mean you fell. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, that's mm -hmm. what I'm learning now. And I keep learning it every day. So yeah. I think I would say just be a little more gentle on yourself. I mean, I think we're so hard on ourselves, like what you said, and I, and you never know what somebody's going through. Um, how you say, you know, when we, we go home, you close your door, you don't know what's going on. Like, I've cried, you know, I, I have a husband and child, I still cry, you know, and sometimes they don't know it, but you just do it because you just, you, you, it's hard to express yourself sometimes and explain your feelings, or sometimes you don't even know why you're feeling a certain way. You know, we, you know, hormones were all like there, you know, you're like PMS in, like, why am I feeling like this? Um, but I think it's be gentle because you don't know what other people are going through. And I think sometimes we can, um, we can kind of be so ugly to people or not give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh, I haven't heard from my friend in a while. Well, she must be da da da, but not knowing, like, she is like going through it and just the fact that she like woke up this morning is her win for the day you know so i think being a little more gentle with ourselves is, is really important a good thing in self-care and that therapy piece i, I haven't yeah. been in a, in a long time but i think probably everybody should go just for some maintenance like an oil change yeah, like everybody yeah. should go for some maintenance mm -hmm. and if you don't mind sharing like did something trigger you to go or was it just like you know what I think I want to go see somebody just just to see or was it like something like kind of catastrophic that really triggered like oh crap I'm I think I feel like I messed up I need to go yeah mine was it was something is wrong and but you recognize I, that yes um and I, I talk about um that a lot in my book um, because I noticed, um, and this was uh, a, a while ago, in which I was, I could be writing and just random tears would come out of my eyes. I could be pumping the gas. <laughs> now I just start crying, what the ham sandwich is going on with me? <laughs> and so I noticed that I was having, uh, I, I think everything that I was holding in was, was coming out, mm -hmm. you know, being crying and I couldn't hold it in anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I was like, yeah, this doesn't seem normal. Let me, let me talk with someone about it. And, and from there, I started to, I guess, 
when I'm starting to pour out what's going on, that helped me. Um, and also when I start to ruminate on different things, like, hmm, why are you fixated on something that happened last Tuesday? And you're, and I'm doing all my other things I'm supposed to do, but my brain is like going over that and it is getting bigger and bigger and I'm just kind of suffocating. I need to find out how to deal with that situation so that I can breathe, move, um, you know, and move on. Um, so I think going to therapy, like how to talk to myself, mm -hmm. like sometimes I'm, you know, I can be hard on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, because you expect more, because you're supposed to be you, you, you the bomb.com. Mm -hmm. So if you having problems. Wait a minute, right? <laughs> so Not me. Yes. Yeah. So you have to be upfront with yourself, like Tasha. You need help, like not just like mental help, but you need assistance from somebody who is uh, an expert um, at this. So, so sometimes your friends cannot help you right. with, with that. Sometimes your 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 parents cannot help you. You really need somebody who is who deals with this on a regular basis to help you to, to guide you um, through um, a more uh, pleasing uh, person for you to deal with because you're the one that has to live with yourself. Like you said, yeah. you go home with yourself, you wake up with yourself. So let's let's help your little self out. Mm -hmm. I think um, for me it was more of a catastrophic thing. Um, I was by myself um, when that was the moment when I realized that it was, it was okay in my family, we looked at counseling like, or therapy like a weakness. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really want to go, um, especially the way it was talked about a lot in my family. So when I went, nobody knew I was going. Um, not even my best friend of over 20 years knew I was going to a, a therapist. So um, it was one of those things I uncovered and learned a lot about myself in there, things that I was in denial about with myself. You know, we use words like depression and anxiety, and it's like considered like you're weak. Mm -hmm. But I think once you acknowledge that that's what you're battling, it's a lot easier to battle it. And the people I was surrounded by, they just used medication to mask it. And I'm like, I'm not really big on using medication for a lot of things. Not if I feel like um, I can get through it yeah. with just, you know, some additional help and other things to help me get where I need to go and allow me to refocus and recenter myself a lot better and acknowledge that when this happens, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. This is how I fight back, so to speak. This is how I regain control and regain focus. Um, because I've learned like when I shut down, I shut down all the way. Mm -hmm. There's no music on, there's no TV on, you're just staring at the ceiling and tears are coming out your eyes and you really don't know how to explain that to people. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until I sat down with one of my friends where she was dealing with the same thing. So this mm -hmm. kind of goes to this conversation. Um, and for two years, we were both battling it separately and didn't even know that was going on. And now she decided to go see a therapist. So I think you're right. It's about really, um, I encourage people to go. Talking with my therapist was probably one of the best decisions I ever made. Um, and it's helped me grow and mature as an adult. And that's why people see I handle certain things the way I do now, because I had to go through what I went through to get there. And I needed help and I, my mom couldn't do it for me. My dad, mm -hmm. my sister, they could be there to pat me on the back. But right. the truth is, they don't get it. And sometimes you have to talk to someone who understands it from a different perspective. Yeah. My mine was catastrophic. Um, I, I was 13, so um, I have an eating disorder. I've had one since I was 13. Um, I didn't eat for a year. And my, my mother, my parents never knew. So it was just devastating to my mother for me to, you know, suddenly be very ill and the doctor say, when was the last time she ate? Cause I would wear baggy clothes. And so that was the first time I ever saw a therapist. And I've seen one periodically off and on ever since. Um, having an eating disorder to me, well, I always tell people it's, it's like being an alcoholic. It, it's a disease and it, it never goes away. Wow. The difference is someone who is an alcoholic can live their whole life and never take another drink. Someone with an eating disorder, you have to eat your drug or your alcohol every day and, and try not to, to throw it up or, you know, try, you know, you have, sometimes you have to force yourself to eat. So for me, it was a combination, you know, because then you have to look at, well, what, what really caused the mm -hmm. eating disorder? Because right. people don't have eating disorders, just no, typically one there's, day, there's, yeah. there's always yeah. something yeah. that goes with it. And for me, it was, it was a self-esteem and a low self-worth. And then it, it, as I got older, it turned into a, a control issue. If mm -hmm. I felt out of control, 
um, I would have issues. And I still, to this day, I still, I still see a therapist. I love her. For those people watching who might be just like trying to find a way, like for some self care tips. I know you guys mentioned like mental health stuff, but um, what are some other ways? I guess I want to give some people some tips on just how they can boost their their self care, their self esteem, um, and just make themselves feel good. Like exercise is truly an outlet. I feel like a lot of times people put exercise off. That's the first thing that people remove mm -hmm. from their routine when mm -hmm. when when life and life always happens. Mm -hmm. So when something happens, that's the first thing to go. And I was like, that is your one thing. A lot of times that's the one thing people may do for like themselves mm -hmm. out of the whole day or the whole yeah. week. You're always with people. You're always people with at work. You might be with people at home, but someone with the gym or when they're working out, they're doing that by themselves. You need a self thing. And a lot of times that can be it. It can, you can go to the gym or you can do something for free. I started doing kickboxing and that's when I found mm. a whole bunch. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That, it was really good. I bought my own bag. So that's how oh, wow. it is. Wow, wow. Um, <laughs> but I think also too, um, I like to encourage people, whatever your creative outlet is, focus back on that. That's a great Zen thing because it puts back focus back on you and what you're passionate about. Too many times we're, helping people kind of really achieve all their dreams while you're sit to the side and you don't do anything. Put your phone on do not disturb. That is a real button. Use it and get your sleep. When I started to discover the bedtime do not disturb yes. thing on my phone, I had my favorites. So I told certain people, if you call me for an emergency, it will ring. Mm -hmm. I will answer. I will know it's an emergency, but everything else, I don't hear it. And do your ambiance, you know, mm -hmm. kind of music, the home pod, you know, play ocean sounds and go, right? <laughs> the so white nose machine. Yeah, yes. like people sure. take, yes. look, whatever helps you get through it to the point where you can get your rest. Cause one thing to go to sleep is another to actually get rest. Mm. I agree with all of that. <laughs> um, I, I think that people should definitely plan. Mm. I know when I plan out whether it be my eating, I know when I meal prep and I, I schedule, I have to schedule to go to the gym. If I don't mm -hmm. schedule it, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. If it's right. not in my calendar, I find a way to, to oh, well, I, I'll ju I just have to finish this and then I'll go and then it never happens. Mm -hmm. So to schedule these moments, to schedule the moments to go to the gym, to schedule every day to sit and talk to yourself in a positive light. I think those are all great tips. I think um, for me lately, reading has been mm. good for me. I love like a good inspirational book. So yeah. one that's just like inspiring, um, something that just makes me feel good. And I feel like when you read and you and you feel smart, like you feel better about yourself. You're like, oh, like I feel good. I learned something new or I learned a new word. Um, reading has been has been that for me. And then just like, I'm, I'm a big, I like praise and worship. So I can like, like on my way to work, you know, sometimes you wake up kind of like on the wrong side of the bed, you wake yeah. up, I, I've, I've plenty of times I've woken up with an attitude and you just don't know why. I'm like, all right, I, I need to, I need to shift this. I really appreciate y'all coming on. Um, this has been very enlightening and thank you all for sharing your, your personal intimate story. Thank you all so much for watching and hope you all were able to get some great self-care tips and remember to take some time out for yourself and please follow us on social media at Before Brunch TV. We'll see you next time. Thank you.